Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about perfectly competitive firms in the short run. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review Booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. Let's get into the content. Now you already learned about perfectly competitive markets back in unit two. That's the supply and demand graph that you've already learned to love. Now we're going to talk about the qualities of the individual businesses or firms within those markets. As far as the number of firms within the market, we are going to have many of them. And that means there's a lot of competition between these sellers. Also, firms within a perfectly competitive market are going to sell identical products. That means there is no differentiation between the different products and there are no name brands. Agricultural products are often used as examples of perfectly competitive markets. Corn, for example. And corn is an example because when it comes to purchasing corn, very few people are looking at the particular brand. One brand of corn is the same as another brand of corn. We're also going to have very low barriers to entry. Barriers to entry are anything that make it difficult to start a business. And when there are low barriers to entry, it makes it easy for firms to enter or exit the market. And when there are low or no barriers to entry in a particular market, there is going to be zero economic profit for firms in the long run. And that's because when firms are earning economic profit, more firms will come into the market, the price will fall, and the profit will go away. Likewise, if firms are earning economic losses, firms will exit the market, prices will rise, and firms will break even again. So there is no economic profit in the long run. Now remember, zero economic profit means there is still a positive accounting profit. Also, firms within a perfectly competitive market have no influence on the price they charge. They are what are called price takers. That means the supply and demand graph for the market, that graph we already know, is going to dictate the price for each individual business within the market. So our example for a perfectly competitive market is going to be corn. And let's say we have an individual farmer who sells corn. Now that farmer can't choose how much they charge for corn, they are going to be stuck at the market price. The equilibrium we find from the supply and demand graph is $7. And that means each bushel of corn will sell for $7. And so we're going to go ahead and fill out this table here. The price for every quantity of output that can be produced by this firm is going to be that market $7. Next, we're gonna fill in the total revenue for this firm. As you already know, total revenue is the price times the quantity. At one unit of output, the total revenue is going to be one times $7, which is $7 of total revenue. At two units of output, two times $7 is $14 worth of total revenue. Three units of output, we have three times seven for $21 of output. And we keep on multiplying the quantity by the price and it gives us those other numbers for our total revenue. And when it comes to producing, you might think that the business should just produce as much as it possibly can because the price isn't going to change as they produce more output. But that's not where profit maximization is found. In order to find profit maximization, we must find our marginal revenue and our marginal cost. Let's start off with our marginal revenue. So the marginal revenue, again, is the change in total revenue. It's essentially the revenue brought in for producing one more unit of output. And for zero units of output, we will have zero total revenue, which means at one unit of output, that $7 of total revenue is also the $7 of marginal revenue. And with two units of output, the total revenue increases by $7, which means our marginal revenue is again $7. At three units of output, our total revenue goes from 14 to $21. And again, that's a change of $7 for our marginal revenue. And if we keep on going, we can see that the change in total revenue is going to continue to be $7 it's equal to the price. So now we're going to go ahead and graph the total revenue and marginal revenue curves for a perfectly competitive firm. The total revenue curve is a linear curve that slopes upward and it increases at a constant rate. And that's because the price is constant with each additional unit of output. And since that increase in total revenue is constant, that means the marginal revenue or the change in total revenue is going to be constant as well, which means we have a horizontal marginal revenue curve. But that marginal revenue curve isn't only marginal revenue. Let's look at average revenue and find out what else it is. The average of anything is the total of that thing divided by the quantity. So $7 for that first unit of output gives us $7 of average revenue. $14 of total revenue divided by two units of output gives us $7 of average revenue at two units. $21 of total revenue divided by three units of output gives us another $7 of total revenue for three units. 
And if we keep on going, our average revenue remains $7. And if we graph all this out, we've already seen the marginal revenue curve. It's going to be equal to $7 at every unit of output. And since that quantity is actually the quantity demanded, that means we can graph the quantity with the price to get our demand curve. And that's also going to be at $7 for every unit of output. Our average revenue curve will be graphed with those two columns there. Again, it's going to be at $7 for every quantity of output. And we also have the price curve where at every quantity of output, the price of those units is $7. And so when we get over to our graph, we're going to have the firm's marginal revenue curve at $7. And we've already seen that it's horizontal at the $7 dictated by the supply and demand graph equilibrium. But it's also our demand curve, our average revenue curve, and our price curve. And as many teachers call this, it's Mr. Darp. Marginal revenue equals demand equals average revenue equals price for a perfectly competitive firm. And when you graph this out for your free response questions, you will likely be asked to do side-by-side -side graphs. And that means you have a market on one side with your equilibrium quantity and price marked. That equilibrium price is going to head on over to the firm graph. Both graphs are going to have P on the y-axis and Q on the x-axis. And that equilibrium price from the market will also be the price for the firm labeled PF here. And at that price from the market, we have our marginal revenue, demand, average revenue, and price. And as a reminder from what you've seen in previous units, we have our total revenue in the market right there. It's the quantity produced times the price. And for the firm, at whatever quantity the firm is producing, we multiply that quantity times the price the firm is getting, and we have the firm's total revenue as well. And it's found in that rectangle there. Next, we're going to be talking about profit maximization. The motivation behind any firm's level of production is the profit motive. And the assumption in economics is that rational firms are going to profit maximize. Well, we can find the profit maximizing quantity of output by looking at the total revenue compared to the total cost of production. You've already seen the total cost of production before. It increases at an increasing rate, then increases at a decreasing rate, and then increases at an increasing rate once again. At quantities where the total cost is greater than the total revenue, that firm is earning economic losses. At quantities where the total cost equals the total revenue, then the firm is breaking even or earning zero economic profit. But on this graph, the firm can find the profit maximizing quantity of output at the place where the total revenue is greater than the total cost by the largest margin. And it's marked with Q3 on this graph. That is the firm's profit maximizing quantity. And while you could definitely see the total revenue and total cost graph on your exam, we have to remember that most decisions are made at the margin. And so we're going to go ahead and look at the marginal revenue graph again and throw on a marginal cost curve that you've already learned in a previous video. And remember that profit is maximized where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So find the intersection between the marginal revenue curve and marginal cost curve drop down, and that is the quantity of output where this firm profit maximizes. And that's going to be true for every profit maximizing firm within this class. They profit maximize where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So next we're going to talk about short run equilibrium. In the long run, firms are going to break even and earn zero economic profit. But in the short run, they can earn economic profits or economic losses. We're going to go ahead and start with economic profit. And to show you how to make this graph, we're going to start with a perfectly competitive market with our equilibrium price and quantity marked. And that means we have a firm graph with the price and quantity marked on the axes here. And the price from the market is going to come on over to make the firm's price as well. That firm's price is going to become the marginal revenue, demand, average revenue, and price for the firm. We're going to throw in our marginal cost curve. Remember that they profit maximize where the marginal revenue equals the marginal cost, right there. And then drop down to find the profit maximizing quantity of output for this firm, labeled QF. Now, if this firm is earning an economic profit, that means that the average total cost must be less than the price in the market. So we're going to go ahead and draw in the average total cost below the price curve for the firm. 
And when I say below the price curve, I'm talking about at the quantity that they are producing. In order to find the area of economic profit, we're also going to put a second point out on the average total cost curve above the quantity the firm is producing, then take those two points to the axis. And now we have the area of profit for this firm. If there were numbers here, we could calculate the area of that box to find out how much profit this firm is making. And when you draw this graph, make sure that you understand that the average total cost curve drops below that profit box. Make sure you show that minimum of the ATC intersecting the marginal cost curve below the profit box. Now let's take a look at economic losses. Here we again have our market with our equilibrium price and quantity marked. That price is going to move all the way over to the firm graph and become the firm's marginal revenue, demand, average revenue, and price. Throw in that marginal cost curve and find the profit maximizing quantity where MR equals MC. Drop down, there's our quantity the firm will produce. And now we're going to draw in the average total cost curve at a place where the firm is earning economic losses. That means that the average total cost curve will need to be greater than the equilibrium price at the quantity the firm is producing. That means it goes above our MR equals MC point right there. We draw in that ATC. And from that profit maximizing quantity, we can go up a little further and make a point on our average total cost curve, bring both of those two points to the axis, and this is the area of economic loss. Again, you could calculate the area of that rectangle to find the amount of economic loss this firm faces. Also, as a reminder, this firm will continue to operate at a loss as long as the price is greater than the average variable cost. There's our average variable cost there, and at the profit maximizing quantity, we can see that the price is above the AVC, and this firm is actually losing less money as a result of operating. If they shut down, then they are going to lose their fixed cost, which is that rectangle there. It's the gap between the ATC and the AVC brought all the way to the axes. So if they continue to operate, they only lose that rectangle of economic loss, and that's less than their total fixed cost. Firms can not only earn economic profit or economic losses, but they can also earn zero economic profit in the short run. Let me show you how to draw that graph. Again, we're going to start with our market equilibrium. That price is going to move on over to the firm graph, become our Mr. Dart, put in our marginal cost curve, drop down below the MR equals MC point. That's our profit maximizing quantity. And now, since the firm is going to be breaking even, that means that the average total cost is going to equal the price at the profit maximizing quantity. We have the average total cost being equal to the marginal revenue and the marginal cost. All three curves are intersecting there. And here, the firm is breaking even or earning zero economic profit. And we call this situation long run equilibrium. Now on the AP microeconomics exam, you're going to see a lot of questions where they don't draw graphs for you, but you have to be able to analyze numbers in order to determine whether or not firms are earning economic profit. So here we have a firm that's producing 25 units with a price of $7 and an average total cost of $7. Since this firm's price equals the average total cost curve, they are breaking even and earning zero economic profits. Next, we have firm B here. They are producing 10 units of output with a total revenue of $100. Now we need to find the total cost. And in order to find that, we're going to take the $9 of average total cost, multiply it by those 10 units of output, that gives us $90 of total cost. That means this firm is earning $10 of economic profit. Finally, we have firm C. Firm C is producing 10 units of output as well. They have a marginal revenue of $8 and a total cost of $95. Now remember, since this is a perfectly competitive firm, the marginal revenue and price are equal. That means the marginal revenue of $8 times the 10 units of output gives us $80 of total revenue. Compare that to the total cost, and that means this firm is earning economic losses of $15. But as long as that price of $8 is greater than our average variable cost of what we now know is $6, then this firm is actually going to lose less by operating because the average variable cost is less than the marginal revenue or price. And there you have it. That is everything you need to know about perfectly competitive firms in the short run. If you're ready to learn about perfectly competitive firms in the long run, make sure you watch the next video. If you still need more help after that, pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. That's it for now. I'll see you all next time.